Okay, this is a standard digital scale. We're going to weigh the subject. Okay, the weight is 113.8 pounds. Step off. Now I'm going to give the subject a 17 ounce item and reweigh. One thirteen point eight pounds. Hmm, she just picked up a pound and it doesn't show any difference. Step off. Now, weigh one more time with everything. One thirteen point eight. Step off. Hand me the seventeen ounce object. Way again. One thirteen point eight. Now we're going to wait a few moments and weigh again in five minutes with the same seventeen ounce object. Now it's been a couple minutes. We're going to weigh the subject again now with the one pound weight. Now you can see that. Nothing's happened. She hasn't had any water, anything. That changed one thing, but she's only weighted. Now the weight went from 113.8 to 114.4. So now I'm going to have her weigh one more time with the weight and see what happens. 113.8. Now I'm going to have her step off, hand me the 17 ounce weight, and weigh one more time. 114.4. Very interesting. Now I'm going to have the subject weigh one more time without the 17 ounce weight after a few moments. Now you see her weight is 113.4. Step off. Weigh again. I bet you it'll be 113.4. Imagine that. Now let's do it one more time with the weight again. The weight 17 ounces, so it should go up about a pound, a little bit more. Wow, this time it went up to 114.6. Interesting. Step off. Take the weight away. Weigh again. 113.2. Interesting. Step off. Weigh one more time without the weight again. 113.2. Step off. Now she's going to weigh with the one pound weight again. 114.4. Step off. Weigh without the weight one more time. No weight. 113.4. Step off. One more time without the weight. I predict 113.4. Yep. This concludes my video. You can draw your own conclusions. So I went back and uh, put this in a spreadsheet. So basically, if you go through the video and listen, there were 15 trials or uh, the subject was weighed 15 times so let's go back to the first four so the person steps on the scale it's not holding basically a 1.1 pound weight they weigh 113.8 pounds so then the next time 
they're holding 1.1 pounds, they weigh themselves, they get 113.8 again. Theoretically, you'd like to see that go up around a pound. Step off, weigh again, 113.8. Now they get rid of the 1.1 pound weight, and they get the same answer. So in trials one through four, I'll just read this. I believe the scale software is programmed to indicate the exact same weight as long as the data it collects internally is within a predetermined amount. Say in this case, if it's if it weighs you and it gets a different answer and it's less than a pound, it just reports the same thing. That way you think this thing is really accurate to the tenth of a pound. Now if it's different by a larger amount, I'll go ahead and fix this typo here. If it's different by a larger amount, Boy, I can't spell here, can I? <laughs> it's different by a larger amount. The scale assumes a new person has stood on the scale, so now it reports a new number. So I think it's kind of gaming you to give you the same answer if it thinks the same person is just getting on and off within a you know, one-minute period, two-minute period, whatever. After a certain amount of time, I think the scale software is written based on the assumption that it's not a single person trying to see how repeatable the scale is. And it reports a new number because it's assuming a new person is now on the scale. So that's kind of what I conclude from the first four trials. So then in the video we waited, I don't know, three to five minutes. We started again, this time holding the weight. And we get 114.4 pounds. So, assuming there's a timer on this, I would expect that, because now the time's expired, it doesn't know that the same person's there, so it just reports what it, what it thinks your weight is. So it's 114.4. A couple things here, um, it reports a 0.6 pound difference when it really should be a little over a pound. And then, uh, step on the scale again. Trial 6, holding the weight, get the same answer, fine. Now what's interesting, the third time, or trial 7 in this case, the person is no longer holding the weight, yet it reports 114.4 again. So you'd like to think it would go down the 0.6 pounds it went up, or maybe a pound, but it didn't. So in the first two cases here, it looks like the scale is going to report the same thing if you get on and off multiple times. If you're not really observant, you're going to think, hey, this, this thing's really accurate and that's my weight. Okay, so we waited another three to five minutes and started some of these trials all again with trial eight. So this time, step on the scale <clears throat> without the weight, it's 113.4. So if you think about that, if the scale was repeatable, 8 should match trial 1 because they're the same condition. And then on trial 9, jump on it again and it's 113.4. So it's not changing. It probably is internally, but they're just kind of fooling you to think it's repeatable. So now what's interesting is on trial 10, and I've got another typo here. On trial 10, the scale does report approximately 1.06 pound increase. So I kind of suspect that internally this repeatability trick, as I call it, occurs right around the difference of a pound. And since maybe 8 and 9 were a little bit low, this time in, in trial 10, if it got now uh, a 1.2 pound difference, now it assumes, well, maybe another person has hopped on the scale. So I'll go ahead and it will go ahead and report the new weight. So then what's interesting in 11, took the weight away. Now we get yet another number, 113.2. So you would hope that it would match trial 1, which is 113.8, or trial 8, which is 113.4. So both of those are worth no weight. 12 is just a repeat of 11 to get the same answer, which is what I would expect if it operates the way I believe. 
And then um, we go ahead and hold the weight again, and on trial 13, it's 114.4. So maybe it, you know, it's over that one pound difference or whatever that difference is where it actually reports a new number. Now what's interesting, then in 14 and 15 there's no 1.1 pound weight. And you get your third answer, the 113.4. So it's kind of interesting. The reason I brought this up is because I used to think my scale was accurate and re repeatable from weighing myself multiple times in a row and getting the same answer. And then on top of that, I used to think that all my weight variation from day to day was due to hydration or maybe actually changes in body fat. So now what I believe is those could be true. They're probably hydration changes every morning when I weigh myself. I might have had less or more water before I went to bed. Um, and I could have actually lost some weight or gain some weight so there could be some fat changes but on top of that there are also changes because the scale is really not as good as I once thought so when you weigh yourself on a daily basis you see the weight changing all over the place some of it could be due to your scale it may not be as accurate as you as you believe so uh, try this test at home find something that weighs half a pound or a pound or a pound and a half and and try it but uh, just wait five minutes in some cases before repeating the test and sometimes do multiple ones right after another. See what kind of answers you get. Um, you may be surprised or maybe you're surprised that you have a really good scale. Um, maybe you get what you pay for. That would be an interesting concept. Thank you for watching this video.